February 21st, 2022, I removed my breast implants. First words here are gratitude to you all for supporting me in many ways during this chapter of my life. I shared my experience to turn this topic inside out and to bring light to other areas I feel are associated with body modification. I wanted these videos to be more than a before and after video, an honest reflection that I feel will help others in a much deeper way. For years, I have existed in this social space with breast implants, and I recognize my presence online has influenced others to analyze their chest, and as I've had many tell me, undergo breast augmentations themselves. I'm human, and recognize that I have to forgive myself and my contribution to an area that I no longer feel aligned with. In addition to forgiveness, how can I positively contribute to this space? I can be honest, and I can share my story. This experience has given me incredible perspective, and as I've said in my last video, has been one of the greatest lessons in my life, truly. And in this moment, I get rushes of excitement for where we're going as a society in regards to our bodies, our physical form. Never have I heard more conversations about the imperfect being the perfect, looking at our asymmetry and our scars and celebrating them and transforming this relationship that we have to our physical form into not just a good one, but a beautiful one. a lot to cover so the hair's going up groovy and as a continuation of the first video I'm just going to expand a bit on all of the points that I mentioned so we're gonna be talking about before ever having implants during the explantation process post-op self-love mental health and other influences a reminder that what I express here is reflective of me my experiences thoughts and heart Elements of this video might not be in alignment with your personal viewpoint, and that is okay. I encourage and welcome you to share your own if you feel comfortable, and also welcome nuance. If you have plastic surgery, if you don't, if you're considering it, I welcome every single one of you and appreciate you being here. So when I shared video one, I realized how many people had no idea what an explant was. Maybe that's a good thing. So I just wanted to begin this video by defining what a breast implant explant is. Now my personal definition is just the removal of breast implants from the body. So you get them in and then you decide you want them out. Now something else to define in the beginning would be breast implant illness. And in my own words again, this is where you feel like your state of being is impaired, you feel ill, sick, and you attribute this to your breast implants. So these two are extremely important to define in the beginning because most of the time people are experiencing BII, or symptoms they can't put their finger on, not feeling their best, and then decide to explant. Or you hear about people experiencing BII, you're worried about having these symptoms in the future, and you decide, I don't want to deal with that if it's a possibility and then get the explant too. While that might be the case for the majority of people who explant, there's tons of other elements too that can contribute to someone wanting to explant in the first place. And what I want to do is expand this conversation surrounding explantation beyond BII. Yes, I had a plethora of symptoms when I had breast implants. Yes, I'm having so much relief by having them removed. And I can sit here and share a long, long list of symptoms that I had while having breast implants in my body and then how I felt having them removed. And while that might be helpful for a lot of people, I feel like it's even more important to share how this has sent ripples of alignment to my higher self. This space that we're existing in right now in this moment is highly physical, tangible things. And I've encouraged myself to reach into the spaces that are not so tangible, to seek answers, guidance, and ultimately truth. And the more attuned I get to myself, 
nature, this world, what I'm comprised of, what is beyond. I not only get relief of symptoms from BII, but so much more. I believe with a collaboration between our higher selves and this self, we can truly start to heal. Getting to the root cause of our fear, insecurities, pain, suffering, confusion, frustration, and so much more, all of it. So if you're feeling like, this is such an irrelevant component to a video like this, just show me the before and after, Sophia. This doesn't have to be this deep. I promise you it is. This experience that we're having, it's deep. I believe this is very much at the core of all that we do and all that we are, which is beautiful. So as a young girl, I was made aware of my chest size. I was very lean. So elementary to middle school, junior high, high school. I had so much insecurity, not just about having a smaller chest size or being more lean than my friends, but everything. My hair on my arms, my hair on my lip, my hair on my back, my long fingers, my long toes, everything. I was extremely insecure growing up. So by the time high school hit, my insecurities were at an all-time high. And I decided if I just gained a lot of weight that all of my worries would go away. And so I did. I developed a binge eating disorder and I ate about 10,000 calories a day. How is that possible? It's possible. I'm sure people do even more. Doing all of that, I was like, okay, you gained weight in all of the other places. What are we gonna do about this? The partner that I was with at the time suggested that I would look better if I got breast implants. And I know I'm not the only one this happens to people all of the time. It's difficult to hear the person that you care about look at you and say that you would look better or be more desired if you altered your body. So being told that and then being told by their family, yeah, you would look better if you had breast implants, kind of kicked it up a notch for me but what really pushed it over the edge for me was reading social media comments i would scan through tons of comments and hyper fixate on the ones that would be about my body people saying you would look better if you had larger breasts or some of the extremes like i would pay for your surgery if you just got them done i let all of those comments seep into me at that time, I was an extremely open vessel. I would tell myself, I'm getting breast implants because I want to feel more confident. Neglecting to see that there are so many other areas of being to invest time in, to explore, to gain confidence. More assurance in myself. But I didn't do any of that and I decided just to go on ahead and get breast implants. I thought this was a good one to answer because not everybody gets breast implants just to automatically have larger breasts. Some women do it because they want more symmetry or because they've had breast cancer and so many other reasons I wouldn't know them all. But when I went in to get breast implants, I was about 32AA, 32A and just wanted to have larger breasts. So these questions are relevant to me while having breast implants. And if you've watched any of the previous videos that I've done or podcasts, you'll know that I've had two sets of breast implants. The first ones I got, I was in my late teens. And then the second pair that I got as a revision was about when I was 23, 24. So immediately after getting my first set of breast implants, I had a few things happen. The first thing was I got what's called a double bubble. And this is where your implant sits lower than your natural fold. So think about your natural fold, the bottom of your breasts, and then think about the implant coming lower than that and creating this double bubble. So essentially you have like two folds, although 
This one down here doesn't really look like a fold, it just looks like a bubble rippling all the way to here. So if I leaned over, grabbed anything, you would just see this suction that would happen between my skin and the implant. And I would have these little rivets look like little waves in my skin. More importantly though, was the breathing. For both sets of surgeries, until I got my explant, this never got better. Taking a deep breath, expanding the chest, I could no longer do it in the same way. And my breathing capacity just felt decreased overall. And if you just look at the anatomy of your body and you realize where we put these implants in relation to vital organs, your heart, your lungs, but what happens is you acclimate and that becomes your new baseline. And so over time, something that was so apparent to me, something I was so aware of, became just part of the norm. And until I fully explanted, I forgot what it felt like to breathe. For both implants, they were placed under the muscle. I was also working out a lot at that time, and I realized how uncomfortable it was going to be if I used this muscle group at all. Anytime that I flex these pec muscles by doing anything like this, they would push my implants out with a muscle. So I actually just did not work out that part of my body for a long time. Jumping felt wrong, and not just because of the weight, but because of this added element of the implant actually sliding down my rib cage. And that's actually what was happening. I took a picture of my implants right after surgery one, and then had a picture going up to surgery two, my implant had dropped so much lower over time. And no joke, it was about this much. At about the five year mark, I found another doctor in California and booked a consultation. And before going in, I was so, so adamant about getting an explant. So he expressed his perspective, which was, because I had gone from being a double A or an A to a D, my skin had been stretched out for so long that if we just took everything out in one go, I might have depressions, pockets of deflation, and dents. And because of the kind of work that I was in at the time with wearing swimsuits a lot and modeling, he was concerned that this was going to affect my work and my mental as well. So he suggested that we go in two stages. And the first one was removing the implants, going way smaller, allowing my skin to shrink back naturally over that, and then revisiting this when my skin was all healed and seeing if I even wanted to get an explant at all. So when he was sharing all of this with me, I was really taking this in and also still operating from a very physical mindset. I was very concerned with the way I was going to look. I was very concerned with my work and my job as a model. I was very concerned with how I would be perceived by men and allowed this to really steer my ship so I walked into that consultation thinking I was gonna get an explant, walked out with a surgery book to get smaller implants in. So surgery number two, I went from being a 32D to about a 32B, 32C. And just by going smaller, it corrected so many of the issues. I no longer had a double bubble. My rippling was completely gone and I could look in the mirror for the first time and not wince. So in this surgery, he revised my fold. Like I said before, the implant had created its own little pocket under my natural fold of my breasts. So he removed the implant and then took all of this little pocket that had been created and just stitched it back up to allow my natural fold just to exist again. So surgery number two made me feel so much more comfortable in my body. And while looking in the mirror, I realized this was again temporary. I really wanted to get an explant. We're living in such a toxic world from the food, the water, the air, the content that we absorb. So for me personally to sit here and list a specific symptom and be able to, without a shadow of doubt, draw it back to just my breast implants, just breast implant illness, I couldn't do it. There's a culmination of so many things happening all at once. Like this experience isn't a controlled one in this life. There's so many factors that funnel into 
why you feel the way that you do. And so I can give you a list of symptoms that I've had consistently for 10 years, but I attribute these symptoms not just to breast implants, breast implant illness, but so many other factors as well. I hit such a massive roadblock internally when doing necessary work on my trauma, healing, finding myself. There were so many things that were not in alignment with my values, my ethos. And when I was able to verbalize and point out all of those inconsistencies, this was one of them for me. They were a constant reminder of the emphasis I had been putting on the physical my experience in this world for so long has revolved around how I look, reaching and pulling externally to make myself feel fulfilled, happy, worthy, confident, here. Instead of going internally and realizing that I have a world to give, to explore, and to love. So what was the major thing that made me remove them? It was me. And when I say me, I mean the true me. And I can't speak about the true me unless I also speak about God. And whether I be a small fragment of, or an extension of, or have its entirety existing within me, my higher self, this is the source. I would love to see full-on celebrations during this time for women going back to self. A lot of times the explantation process can feel like you are losing something. It can be very traumatic in many ways. So what a better way to turn something on its head and to make it into something empowering and cleansing, not just for the body, but the soul. I could answer this question all day because I love him so much. Go team, Dr. Chopra. He's in Southern California and the way that I met him was I actually already had my explant surgery scheduled with a whole nother doctor. And at the same time, my friend was sharing her explant process story and journey and doctor. And she kept talking about this doctor and how kind he was how his techniques were so unique, and just his overall philosophy when it comes to this space. I was sold. I was sold. There's a beautiful red bird. Oh my goodness. There's a cardinal who lives in our backyard, and I, <laughs> do what do I have the honor, sir? No lift and no fat transfer for my surgery. I just had an explant. If I got a lift, my scars would have been tucked away underneath my fold, much more concealed for sure. If I got a fat transfer, I would have been more filled out in my breasts. And I knew this. I did not want any of this. I simply wanted this surgery to be all about removing the breast implants altogether. No further modifications. I talked a bit about scars earlier in the video, and yes, they are healing great, naturally, just like they want to. I haven't been putting any creams or gels or anything on it. I just kind of want them to breathe for a bit, and then if I do anything, it would be vitamin E oil, and also a lot of other things to lighten scars that I can talk about if you guys are interested, but for right now, I just want my scars to breathe to exist. Now when I look in the mirror and I see these scars that are not perfectly tucked away underneath my fold, that sit a little bit lower on my rib cage, I feel incredibly connected to my experience. I don't want to hide it away. The surgery was so much easier than getting implants put into my body. The recovery was also so much easier for me personally. So depending on what doctor you go to, you might have drains. 
you might have them for a long time, a little bit of time, or no drains at all. My drains were not in for very long, and again, that just depends on the unique individual, the doctor, and circumstances. Breast augmentation surgery number one was $5,000 USD. This included anesthesia, hospitalization, procedure itself, consultation, all of it. Would not recommend. Surgery number two was about triple that amount, and the explant that I just recovered from was less than surgery number two. What is an unblock? What is this word? So in my own words, the unblock technique is one that is used to remove an implant from your body. And imagine you have the implant in the body. There's a natural capsule that forms around the implant with your own tissue. And when you're performing an unblock, this means that you remove not only the implant from the body, but the capsule also that forms around the implant. So you get everything out in one go. There is no separation of capsule to implant. There's no incision that's made into the capsule to take the implant out first. Everything comes out together. Some people believe that by removing the implant and the capsule around it, you're ensuring nothing releases from the capsule that could possibly make someone feel maybe even worse than they're already feeling. There's also people that believe anything that can come out of the implant can go straight through the capsule, permeate, and move throughout the body just the same, so it really doesn't matter. Then there's also people who believe there is absolutely nothing wrong with breast implants. They don't make people feel sick. Okay, sir. So no matter what you believe, I say if it's going to make you feel better, go ahead and do it. A consideration for our anatomy, under the muscle implants, and unblock. When you elect to get breast implants underneath the muscle, they're extremely close to your heart and your lungs, vital organs. And when a surgeon is performing an unblock, they're going around the implant and capsule to not pierce it. Because if they pierce the capsule, then it's no longer considered an unblock. And while they're doing that, it's extremely important to mention this, they're getting really close to a very thin veil of tissue that separates the heart and lungs from where the breast implant sits. So when asking for an unblock, please make sure you're going to a surgeon that knows what they're doing. They've done this a lot before. And also keep in mind that while getting really close to this fine, thin veil, Sometimes in order to protect your heart and your lungs, they have to pierce the capsule a bit. So for my surgery, I went in knowing I want an unblock, but if for some reason we have to dent into this capsule a bit in order to protect my heart and my lungs, please by all means do it. Luckily, we were able to get everything out in one go. And if you're curious to see how my surgery went, I share some footage while I was under I blurred just a little bit of it, so it is a bit graphic if you're sensitive to these kinds of visuals. But I think it's extremely important to show what body modification entails, and also what bringing yourself back to normalcy entails as well. No. Before having breast implants, I had no deep connection to my breasts. I saw them as a measure of how feminine I was or wasn't. I saw them in a very sexual light, how I feel now about my breasts. I feel incredibly connected to one of the most sacred parts on my body. We are able to bring nourishment to new life. Wow, what an honor, truly. Now there is so much energy being drawn to this area of my body appreciation, gratitude, and love. So now that I'm silicone free, I feel even more prepared to have a child one day. For all three surgeries, my incision was underneath the breast. Surgery number one, getting breast implants put in for the first time, I retained about 10% of sensation in my breast. So I lost 90%. After surgery number two, I regained to about 30%. So still about 70% missing. Now going through the explantation process, being at about four months post-op, 
I've regained about 70% of the sensation. Still a long way to go. We'll see if I ever get back to 100%, but just feeling so incredibly blessed to have regained any at all. One of the most incredible things that I think Dr. Chopra does, and there are many, is what he does with his hands post-op. I get asked this question all the time about dents. Do I have any dents or pockets of deflation? Post-op, getting my drains out, Dr. Chopra was able to manipulate the breast tissue to bring it back to its natural state with his hand. If dents and depressions were a concern for me, one, I probably would have put more emphasis on the possibility of a fat transfer. A lot of people go this route when they are worried about having these possibilities. And also sitting across from a doctor like Dr. Chopra, who knows what they're doing on a whole nother level when it comes to contouring, would make me feel all the more secure. So since removing the breast implants, I feel like my body overall is just less inflamed. This is definitely not medical advice. I'm just sharing with you what I have done. So during the surgery, they had to put mandatory antibiotics into this space. I was under anesthesia and they put a pain med through the IV. Maybe other things while I was under, I don't know. Other than that, the only thing that I did post-op was take one pain pill. And I wish I didn't do this because I never do. And I was just so worried for some reason that my drains were going to be so painful coming out that I needed this pain pill. I did not. Drains coming out were totally fine. I was just trying not to throw up from the pain medication the entire time. And that was fun. Anytime I go through a major surgery or am treating an infection, something viral, recovering. I kind of do the same things every single time. And again, this is not medical advice, but this is a list of things that I like to dapple in. Some of these things you cannot take prior to surgery, during, after a few weeks. So you really need to know what you're doing when it comes to herbs, plant medicine, all of it. But I do love my oregano oil, apple cider vinegar, tea tree, garlic, echinacea, elderberry, curcumin, arnica, kava, CBD, valerian, sovereign silver, all my adaptogens, and more. There's an art and guidelines to taking all of these things, so please do your due diligence and look into them and don't just grab all of these things and start downing them. Not the, not the move. I love loading up on really, really good probiotics during these times. So the highest grade coconut yogurt you can find, no sugar, organic sauerkraut, anything fermented, and also things like chlorella or charcoal to remove what I would call impurities from the body. Everything that I listed under what could be my BII symptoms have gotten a lot better. And it's only four months post-op. It's pretty incredible. I realized while having implants, I was existing with an undercurrent of constant irritability. Physically, I feel liberated. Like, I can do all of these things that I've wanted to do for so long without any pain, without any pressure, without feeling like I have to compensate in some way. And emotionally, I feel so much more content. I feel like my feminine has been crying out for so long, far before breast implants, trying to tell me things. And all I have done my whole life is try to suppress. And it's with this change, all of the ones I've made prior and all of the ones I'll continue to do after that I'll be able to mend my relationship to my feminine. So on the topic of the feminine, do I feel less feminine? No. In fact, I've never felt more feminine in my body than I do now. To me, nothing feels more feminine than flexing, exercising that maternal muscle that we all have inside of us 
turning it inward on me. Leading up to surgery, I imagined a million different versions of my breasts. I imagined them asymmetrical in this way or this way. I imagined them with dents, rivets, depressions, every physical way I could think of. And I accepted each single one, each single version. I thought about the amount of trauma that they've had to undergo since my first surgery. I humanized them a bit. And I also thought about what a low vibration shame is and how I consciously was sending shame, shame, shame to this area for so long. And so no matter what my breasts look like coming out of surgery, no matter physically what, as long as we were healthy, we were okay, it didn't matter because I wanted to accept this part of my body that has been through so much with open arms. and the amount of time that we spend looking in the mirror, fixating on ourselves through filters, shaping ourselves through body modification apps, all of it is to me such a waste of time, yes, life. The happiest times in my life, the best memories that I've ever had don't revolve around a mirror or an app or a social media outlet. They exist in this very real realm. And their memories where my hair was all over the place. I was dirty from the mud or the rain that I was so caught up in laughing that I forgot to check my teeth in the mirror. Where making somebody hysterically laugh until they cry was the best feeling. When I'm at my worst, is when I'm alone, secluded, scrolling around on social media, not laughing, taking things so seriously, taking myself so seriously, analyzing myself in the mirror, and sitting there wasting time wishing I was something else. Imagine if this entire physical world turned off and everything went black. And all we had left were our words, our sounds, just this, I would immediately tell a joke. I would wanna make people laugh. I would be able to convey my thoughts, maybe even a little bit more clear because I am taking away the physical component that sometimes distracts or adds pressure. I might even get to know somebody on a deeper level. There are so many of us operating in this world in fear of being too much, of not being enough, not being seen, being seen for the things that do not reflect their true selves. And it can become very difficult for us just to hear the heart, the soul. And in an effort to speak from my heart mind, soul, and truth like I'm doing right now. I want to do everything that I possibly can in this physical space to make it easier for myself and others to feel supported in doing the same. I am so interested and intrigued and excited to learn more about what we have to offer when we place less emphasis on our physical looks. I believe that is mental, physical, and spiritual health altogether. So how do we champion more than just the physical in this dimension that we're existing in right now? Sharing compliments that are an invitation for more of those traits to come out. You're incredibly thoughtful. You are so kind. You are so gentle. You are so compassionate far beyond, you're so pretty, <laughs> you're so hotty toddy, gosh, slay queen, <laughs> I have to say the slay queen thing really just like nails on a chalkboard, it feels good to be recognized, and if we can keep celebrating these other areas of being that are so beautiful, 
then I think we can start to place more value on them as a society. So how do we acclimate to a world of increasing cosmetic surgery procedures, filters, body modification apps and technology, realities where you can create your own avatar from the ground up? Don't even have to be human if you don't want to. It's going to be incredibly important to build self-confidence and to know thyself. Not existing in your own bubble, acknowledging that there are changes and that there are things happening, but knowing yourself, your roots, what's important to you, and building strength within that. Since we're existing in such a tech-driven social media society, I think it's extremely important to bring reality there. If you don't see anyone else doing it, do it. Bring the reality there, bring the funny, bring the weird, bring the humor, bring the imperfect, bring the flaws, bring all of it. If you want there to be less emphasis on cosmetic surgery, be that. If you want there to be less emphasis on filters, don't use them. If you want there to be more emphasis on love, generosity, compassion, and kindness, embody that. This isn't anything new. But your literal existence can be an embodiment of everything that you hold true and dear to your heart. The strongest self-love I have is by being authentically me. First finding out what that is and continuing to find out what that is, but by living in that and walking in that every single day. So I'm saying all of this to inspire you to see that you have all of the tools within yourself. It's so nice to ask for help, to be able to receive help, guidance, inspiration, all of that. But ultimately, the answers, I believe, are within you. If this is an area that you'd like me to expand on, I'd be so, so happy to. I'd be honored to, to let me know. You're different, you're not the same, you're not yourself. And I wanted to end with this because I believe that nobody knows you better than yourself. And we in this life show many versions of ourselves to many different people. Sometimes it's a survival tactic mechanism. Sometimes it's for acceptance. Sometimes it's just to try on another version to see if it fits better. And to not feel boxed into a version that people know you as just because it's more comfortable for them. During these last 10 years of having breast implants, I was told by so many people to not get them out. Sophia, this has become a part of you. This is what you're known for. This is a part of you booking jobs as a model. This is how I met you. And I don't want to be with you romantically unless you have these breast implants. All of this can weigh you down and keep you at a version of yourself to appease other people. And from somebody who has lived so long to please other people or to make more people feel comfortable, please, please be yourself. Please be yourself. The world depends on it. Humanity depends on it. We need you exactly as you are. Something that I thought would be really helpful is to create a separate video for those of you who are going through an explantation process. And maybe it'll actually be helpful far beyond people going through an explantation process. But I'm gonna be walking you through my thoughts, my heart speak, foods, recipes to try, music. I hope this has made you feel appreciated, loved, celebrated, seen, and so necessary as you are. 